my car. How was the sale? Huh? Lots of money to spend? What do you want? Drive the car. Please. Now. Please, look, I can give you money. To the pumps, is it? Yeah, ugly one. This guy found it first thing this morning. Looks like she's been dumped from a car, maybe. We've got tire marks here, got drag marks up there. What about the victim? Anything useful? Nah, Caucasian, around 30, about 175-ish. And that's where it starts to get difficult. Did you warn them? Glorious Technicolor. Whoa, no head, no hands. Yeah, we're already looking for them. Uniforms are onto it now. Sarge has set a preliminary radius, 1K. Soon as we've got the numbers, we'll start a full sweep. Someone's tried to make her unidentifiable. I mean, the hands as well. Suggest maybe she had a criminal record. Killer was worried about fingerprints. Sex worker junkie. Anything's possible. An approximate time of death? Well, it's hard to say. She's been here a couple of days. Uh, rigors passed, but there's some infestation. I'll have a better idea after autopsy. So tire marks are over there? About 10 metres from here. Have to be after dark with that train line there. It's too risky otherwise. So, Mac, Saturday night, you think? Uh, late, probably. Judging by the lack of blood, she was already dead. It's as if the head and hands were an afterthought. Well, it's spontaneous. Yeah, grab a handy tool. It's like they suddenly had a body on their hands. Senior Constable, Boss with our search team is here and I need you to coordinate. Yes, Sarge. What's the search brief? Storm water drains, building sites, the creek, you name it. straight away. Do you want to take a look at my list? All right, see what I can do. Thanks. We'll need anything you can give us on this one. Jane Doe. You know how quickly these can get away on us. <laughs> Mac, got hmm? anything for us? Ah, well, she took care of herself. Yeah, we noticed the pedicure. Anything else that might help us identify a birthmark tattoo? No, nothing like that. There's uh, no unusual distinguishing mark. She was well toned. Gym junkie? A gym regular, I'd say, possibly, yes. Age? I'd put her age around 30. Good general health, no children. Sounding less and less like a druggie or a hooker. The decapitation was definitely post-mortem? Yes, which suggests to me that some kind of head injury could be the cause of death. I mean, there's no trauma anywhere else. So, we've got nothing. There's never nothing. For instance, her liver's in great shape, but this doesn't sit right with her stomach contents. How do you mean? Well, for the past week or so, she's been drinking heavily, eating mainly takeaway foods, and she's loaded the eyeballs with antidepressants. Plus... Bruising. Not a blow, I don't think, but uh, she landed heavily on this shoulder and arm. Plus... Another plus. Now, if you just assume that this is her hand here, like so. OK. Now, the axe cut's here, clean. One blow. OK, now I found another deep cut at right angles to the severing blow on the back of the right wrist. The back. Not a suicide attempt, then? No. No, the, it's the tail end of a deep gash that goes down probably the back of the hand, like so. Can you tell when this happened? Well, given the degree of healing, I'd say probably at the same time the bruising. So a cut as well? A cut. Which was treated. What's that? It's a suture. She went to a hospital. Yeah. About a week before she died. Yeah, I'll be back in about an hour or so. You can come and see me then. All I'm asking for is more uniforms, ma'am. 
Ma'am, it's a formal request now, is it? I've got a 1K radio sweep search running. I've got a door knock happening, and now we have to check emergency departments at the hospitals and talk to gyms. I need more people, ma'am. And I'm telling you, I can't get them. What about a media appeal for information? Bit hard to circulate a description when the body doesn't have a head. I'll see what, what I can, can do. do. Young woman, 30-ish, uh, Caucasian. Severe bruising on the arm, deep gash on the back of the hand and wrist. Uh, sutures. Yeah, tidy. Triple toe. Yeah, they look like mine. I'm... That to be more, though. This isn't the whole cuff. Well, the rest of the stitches were probably on the hand that was subsequently chopped off. The, the right hand? Yeah, look, I, I do remember uh, Friday. A few millimetres to the left and shouldn't needed a tendon group. Can you give us a description? Mate, there's a zoo in here at the weekends. I can't tell you how many people I see. They all become the thing they're in here for, you know? Broken leg in 12, head trauma in 14. Sorry. It's very important. All I can remember was she was a bit teary, a bit shaky. Um, had a split lip too, I think. Said she'd slipped and fallen through a glass coffee table. Quite domestic. Possibly. You're supposed to report those. Yeah, well, we were busy and she denied it. Look, she was well groomed, stylish, pretty, I think. Long hair, nice hands. Hair colour? Sorry. Look, I could uh, maybe draw a bracelet for you. A bracelet? Yeah, a lovely piece. Antique. Rose-cut diamonds set in platinum with a jet feature inset. Art Deco. My dad's a jeweler. I grew up in his workshop. If I hadn't ended up a surgeon, I'd probably be cutting diamonds. Maybe she left a name. Yeah. Marion Nottingham? <laughs> oh, yeah, right, and I'm Robin Hood. <laughs> False name, and she refused any antibiotics or painkillers, so there's no pharmacological record. So maybe she was on the run. Why? An abusive husband, maybe? What's this bracelet worth? Uh, Dr. Stanwell reckons you'd be looking at at least six grand. It's a one-off special. Don't you guys check your internal emails? If we get an alert, we do. I sent a work up from the drawing a good four minutes ago. Thanks, Paul. Very nice. That certainly looks expensive. How about a mugging turned ugly? No, it doesn't fit with the decapitation. Whoever did this knew who she was or what she was and didn't want us to find out. Fair enough. Get this image emailed to jewellers, auctioneers, antique dealers, then hit the phones and follow them up, all of them. Send it to the paper, Sarge, crime watch. Wouldn't hurt. No, no, it was platinum. OK, sir, uh, thank you. Idiot. So you've had nothing like that across oh, the counter? Thanks. All right, thanks for your help. Yeah, well, if, if you do. If you can give us a call, we'd appreciate it. Thank, thanks a lot. Look who's here. <laughs> yeah. Hi! Food. I know you lot. <coughs> Coffees and pizzas that sit in the box. And here you come home and lies about having eaten. Oh, thanks. Ty. Healthy, sustaining, eat. You bloody beauty, one more pizza supreme. I'm gonna vomit. Thanks, Emma. What do we owe you? Oh, no, get out. Dinner, actually. When this one's done. Deal. You can choose the restaurant. OK, that'd be great. The green bits of vegetables, you should eat them. Yes, Mum. <laughs> Sweet. No, no, stay, stay. Have some with us. Yeah, there's, well, there's plenty to go around. Oh, nah. I'm busy. That's cool. Homicide. Detective Ryan. That's right. Yep. You did, sir. How certain are you? Uh-huh. No, I can't make any guarantees about that, sir, but you've called us now and we will follow up on this. Yes, I can hold. Got a hit. An old bloke at an estate jewellers in Yarraville. A guy sold him the bracelet but was reluctant to show his driver's licence. He's getting the name for me now. Yes, sir, I'm still here. That's Slade. Damien Slade. Look closer, Damien. Bloody hell. I knew this would come back and bite me on the bum. I bought it under the counter. My own money. I didn't tell my boss. No, but you didn't get an ID, did you? Are you kidding? She probably stole the thing anyway. She? She stunk a booze. She was wired to the max man. She was a junkie. So you thought you'd take it off her hands to help her out? She probably murdered a woman to get it, you dickhead. Do you want us to drag you in as an accessory? What? <laughs> Look, I didn't know, man. I mean, like, any way I can help, OK? I didn't do anything illegal. What was I going to do? She was scary. You're going to give us everything you do know. Day, time, what you paid, everything. 
And you give us your CCTV footage as well. I don't know, man. My boss is... There is probably a murderer on that footage. What? And I don't think your boss is going to like it if we come back here with a search warrant and check out everything in the store. Is he? He bought it for $1,200. It's worth 7000 Duncan and I believe that it was owned by this woman now, Jane Doe. Ava Stockton. How'd you get to that? Oh, from a little old bloke in Yarraville who bought it from Devious Damien. Poor old guy realised he could be in trouble for that. Suddenly he was desperate to be useful. He did some work on the bracelet's history for us. It was bought from a deceased estate auction three years ago. Kenneth Stockton bought it for his wife, Ava. We pulled her photo from DMV licence records. It's very current, under a year old. She's 31. Good work, guys. So you got the junkie that stole the bracelet and sold it? Yeah, we've got her on CCTV, Sarge. She is way out there. She's wired. Wired enough to be our killer? Let's take a look at her. Freeze? I got a still off this. We need to check her out with the drug squad, start looking at any assault robberies. Especially ones by females. I'll get onto it. Somehow, I don't think you're going to get very far doing that. Why not? Because Ava Stockton sold that bracelet. She and the junkie are the same woman. Now, why would a woman, this woman, go from this to this in such a short space of time? Could be drug addiction. Well, maybe she had a breakdown. Something happened to her that she couldn't handle. Relationship breakup, redundancy. The loss of someone close, death of a child. Something that put her out of her comfort zone. Or maybe she started taking risks, meeting up with the wrong kind of people. All possibilities. We think if we can answer that question, ma'am, then that's going to take us to her killer. How are you approaching it? Uh, we've got a name now, family and friends to talk to. Once we tell next of kin, we'll get her face in the papers, both her faces. It's a death knock. Yeah, a death that he hasn't reported. Which puts him on the list as a person of interest. We need to see if he's going to spin us a line first. Right? Right. Ah, uh, Canberra for a week. Been spending quite a lot of time there lately. Just landed a major government contract. Need to be on the ground for quite a bit in the beginning. What kind of work do you do, Mr Stockton? Uh, IT. Oh, I can't tell you about the government gig. Defence cards being played pretty close to the khaki vest. So what is this about? Are we being vetted? How long was this trip, Mr Stockton? A week. What is this? And did you go to Canberra too, Miss... Uh... Richard. Yes. I'm joint owner of the business in case your brain's ticking over. No, no, of course not. Would it be possible to speak to your wife, sir? No. I, I don't know. I mean, she isn't here right now. Any idea when she might be back? I couldn't tell you. Gemma and I got back half an hour ago ourselves. Do you know where she's gone? No, I don't. Is this about Ava? Is she all right? What's happened? When did you last see your wife, sir? What? Before I left. Do you have any idea where she might be now? No. Ken. No, Gemma. Ken, you need to tell them. No. Tell us what? Oh, for God's sake, Gemma. She left. Uh, I mean, Ava. She left. Before I went up to camera, she walked out. And when was that? Last Saturday, a, a week ago. I got back from the office and she'd gone. But we, we had an argument on the Friday, agreed to call it quits. Right, she left. Do you recognise this piece of jewellery? Oh my God, what's happened? It's Ava's. What's going on? Tell us. I'm afraid we may have some bad news. Um, we believe that your wife may be dead. Oh, Jesus. We need you to come with us, Mr Stockton. Oh, you're arresting him? No, no. I'm sorry, but we may need some help to identify a body. Oh, you bastards! You stand around here asking questions about her and all the time you suspect she's dead. You bastards. He, he can't show me her face. I'm sorry, this woman has been dismembered. Her head and her hands are missing. It's better to tell you this at the beginning. Now, remember, this might not be your wife, you understand? Okay. Mm. 
Mr Stockton, does your wife have any distinguishing marks that you might recognise? Uh, um, mole. Yeah, a little one just inside her right elbow here. Something else? <sighs> a, a scar in, in the middle of her left foot, just above her toes. Stanley, um, jungle drums. The minister has told the commissioner that the parliamentary secretary of defence is worried. About what? Are we looking at any defence contractors in connection with the Ava Stockton murder inquiry? Mm, I believe we are, yeah, potential suspects. I see. Look, there are things in the wind for me, Stanley. I don't need any sudden complications. You were supportive of my team's decision to look at the husband as a primary line of inquiry. And now I'm adjusting that support on the basis of new information received. This needs to be played by the book. Clean and simple. No complications. A good clearance rate would not be a complication, would it? Aunt? No, but a Secretary of Defence with egg on her face could be. This sounds to me as though it's more about you than the case, Bernice. Is there something that you want to share? Just keep me informed, will you, Stanley? This fight with your wife, what was it about? It was about our marriage being over, about everything turning to crap. Why? What happened? God, nothing. I've been working too hard. She, she was discontent, unhappy. Look, we just had a fight, OK? Did it get violent? No. Are these the uh, defence contractors? Your wife ended up yeah. in the hospital with cuts and bruising. She fell. They were arguing, she came at him, he pushed her away, and she fell. On the coffee table, it, it smashed, she cut herself. Did you take her to the hospital? No, she, she drove herself. She said she didn't want me near her. And Miss Pritchard, your business partner, did you tell her what happened? Yes. Why? He tells me everything. They both do. We're all very close. Look, if you think he killed her, you're wrong. The marriage didn't sound too happy. Was it? We've had our moments. Every marriage does, doesn't it? Like what? <sighs> An affair. A couple of years ago. It was, it was a mistake. A one-off. A, a one-night stand, really. And was it him or her? Ava. She told me about it. I told her to fess up and she did. And how did her husband react? They got over it. Ken's a sweetheart. He wouldn't hurt her. He did in this latest argument. Was it his turn to be unfaithful? Were they fighting about you? No, no, of course not. That's ridiculous. Did you leave Canberra at all while you were there working? No. And how would you know? Well, were you together the whole time? Are you and Kenneth Stockton in a relationship, Miss Pritchard? Yes. A business relationship. You stayed on in Canberra for the weekend. Weren't you worried about your wife? We were busy. We were working. This is a massive contract. There's a huge amount at stake. Hmm. We might Tell me about it. The company after this. Go public. He even made the front of the business pages a few weeks back. Did he tell you that Ava had left him? Yes. After a few days, he did. And you still both just stayed up there and worked? I thought Ava would be back when I got home. I, I was going to talk to her, try and sort things out. What things? A marriage, the, the fight. I, I loved her. I, I didn't kill her. Mr. Stockton, something made your wife fill herself up on booze and antidepressants. Something turned her from this into this. There's something he's not telling us. If he was going to sneak away and kill his wife, why would he tell Gemma that they'd had a fight? Cover his tracks in case he came up later. Well, maybe they're colluding, putting up a smoke screen. Their company, uh, this possible public float, it sounds big. If you're floating shares, you don't want an angry ex-wife in the mix claiming half the company. I wouldn't do the share price much good. So maybe they both decided to sideline her permanently. Detectives, we found the head and hands. Now, these were still on a finger, so whoever did this wasn't interested in the valuables. 
You said you expected a head injury to be the cause of death, but she looks relatively intact. She is. No massive trauma or anything, just this one small hole here you'd hardly notice. Contact burns. The weapon was a 22 handgun. Not powerful, but enough to kill her. Under the jaw, what does that suggest? Suicide? Or murder, made to seem like one. Execution face to face. <laughs> anyway, you've got your cause of death. No exit wound, bullet lodged in the brain. We can swing a search warrant of the house off this, can't we? Look for the gun, put some pressure on her husband. If we get a warrant through tonight, we can go first thing in the morning. I want to see if Gemma Pritchard just happens to be staying over. Hello, organiser. Jennifer, how are you going on the background? Ah, uh, yeah, pulling it together. Ava and Gemma do look like they were close. Same hairdresser, lots of credit card match-ups. Did a lot of shopping together. Doesn't mean Gemma wasn't bonking her best mate's husband. What about bank details, phone records for Kenneth too? No, they haven't come through yet. I want to run Ava's medical background as well. The antidepressant she was on, I'd like to know a bit more about that. Well, we can ask her husband when we wake him up in the morning. <laughs> what are you looking for? We don't have to tell you that, sir. The car's in the garage and we need the keys. I did it on the side table. Your car's the one out front? Yes, and your warrant doesn't cover it. Stayed over, did you? Yes, in the spare room. I wanted to keep Kenneth company. He's just lost his wife and I lost my best friend. What are you looking for? She didn't die here. Someone has killed her somewhere else. How do you know that? There's no sign of anything wrong. She left, I told you. She packed her things and walked out after she got back from the hospital. And you just took off for Canberra the next day. Yeah, please, come on, be careful with that. Sir? Your wife was on antidepressants. I already told you, no. Yes, she was. 18 months ago. I knew. She didn't tell Kenneth. Did she tell you why she was depressed? Yes, and I already told you. The affair, the office party thing. She was ashamed and upset and she felt terrible for ages. Yeah, terrible enough. Detectives. Can you open the safe, please? No, there's confidential papers in there, business things. Yeah, or a gun, maybe. Open the safe. Leave it. Step away. Thank you. She left this behind. And her credit cards, bank cards, took a bit of cash. That's all. Like she's leaving me a message. Keep it. Don't need you anymore. What's this? Our wedding DVD. In the safe. Look, there's a player in the lounge. No. Let's take a look. I think we've seen enough. Why is the guy wearing a mask? Kinky? Well, he doesn't want anyone seeing his face. Obviously, your husband's seen the footage. He lied to you about the disc. Well, there's your motive. Sex tape with another bloke. Husband finds it, she's up to old tricks, he loses it. OK. Get an analysis done of the DVD background and action and talk to Kenneth Stockton again. So I did a complete analysis, type of camera use, probable time of day. Great. Thanks. Anything useful? Not in there, no, but watch this. Now, I watched this a thousand times and didn't see it at first. What did you find? Here we go. See? She's saying something. Yeah. Same thing a few times, so I looped it, enlarged it, and look. This isn't me. No. This isn't me. This lady's not enjoying herself. She's out of it. This isn't me. Paul sent the loop to the consulting doctor. He took one look at it. Disorientation, false euphoria, tremors, the dilated pupils. Drugged. Rape. No question. Anything else? Uh, he's still working on the background, but yeah, he found this. Refocus. Somebody else was there behind the camera, getting it all down. She was being blackmailed, wasn't she? Was she? <laughs> she told me, and, and I didn't believe her. I looked at the disc and I, I thought, she cheated on me before you see it. I didn't believe her. Did your wife ever use drugs, Mr. Sir? What? No, I don't think so. Well, you don't think so? We, 
we might have done some marijuana in our student days. But this is my private life. You're Mr. Talking Stockton, about. your wife is dead. Now, if we're offending your sense of propriety, that is too bad. But I assure you, these questions are relevant. Now, your wife may have been drugged and raped. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what have I done? I didn't just push her. I hit her. I, I found the disc. She didn't know. I found it. I hit her. Did she say who was blackmailing her? No. She said she'd uh, had a few drinks at, at a bar. Uh, she was drunk. She couldn't remember what happened. Then. They sent the disc. So what was the deal? Uh, uh, money, 50,000. She paid it? Uh, she said she had, I don't know. You have a trust account attached to the company? R rainy day stuff, yeah, in case it glitches, we, we never touch it. Well, you have now. There was a cash withdrawal made from that account six weeks ago, $50,000. Blackmail's making more and more sense, isn't it, Mr. Stockton? Why would they kill her if she paid? They found a match on that bullet. It came from the same weapon that we used in an armed robbery two years ago. Really? Two blokes. Uh, one got three years, never gave up his mate. Guess who armed robbery thought the mate was? Give up, son. That's it. See that? That was just stupid. One well, look at us and you bolt for it? Tell us about the gun. What gun? Do you think we're stupid, do you? You helped your mate Robbie Lyons knock over Northgate TAB two years ago. You discharged a weapon during the robbery. That's not the smartest thing you've ever done. They didn't catch you, but they recovered a bullet, you dummy. Hey, you kept that gun, didn't you? You kept it all this time, and now you've used it again. You're blackmailing this woman, weren't you? What? No. She came here and tried to persuade you to tell her husband the truth, but instead, you killed her, didn't you? You killed her and you stole that bracelet. No, I, I didn't. Look, look, OK. I didn't pay her 1200 for it. I asked how much she wanted. She said, enough to buy a gun. I said, maybe I could help her with that. No, oh, I swear I didn't kill her. So you supplied her with a gun? Yeah. She came back the next day for it. Back room job. She gave me the bracelet. I gave her the gun. She got me to show her how to use it. I mean, that bitch was crazy. You've charged him? Yes, ma'am. Possession and sale of an unregistered firearm and resist, hinder, obstruct police. That's good. So Kenneth Stockton and his partner are in the clear? It is starting to look that way, yes, ma'am. The powder burns on Ava Stockton's jewel, the fact that she bought the gun, that does point to suicide again. But that makes no sense of the decapitation or the concealing of the body's identity. We do have one possibility we're following up on, ma'am. What's that? Damien Slade said that as soon as she bought the gun, she made a phone call from a phone booth at the front of the shop. She had what he called a pissed-off conversation. Having purchased the gun, she makes a phone call, grows frustrated and angry. Get a real number on the phone box. Apparently, she became quite animated when it appeared the person on the other end hung up on her. We're thinking that's got to be significant. Jen's chasing up the phone records now, ma'am. Good, let's get it wrapped up. Sorry to disturb you, I'm Detective Ryan. This is Detective Joyner. Uh, we're making some inquiries about a phone call from an Ava Stockton. I'm sorry? This woman? I'm sorry, I've never seen her before in my life. Thing is, you see, we traced a call to a mobile four days before she died. Look, I don't understand. Like I said, I don't know the poor woman. The mobile belongs to a Tracy Dobell. Well, there you go. You've got the wrong address then. The account address was a post office box? You're moving. Sorry? Packing boxes. Yeah, soon. My husband's work. What does he do? He's a consultant. Security. Thing is, we went back through the Dobell phone records. There were a bunch of calls to the same gym Mrs Stockton went to. It's not my phone. So we went to the gym and Tracy Dobell had given this address for a membership. Well, she must have lied then. I really can't help you.
Who are you? Who the hell are you? What are you doing? Uh, Detective Joyner, your wife let us in. She invite you to search the place? Huh? You got a warrant? <laughs> Get out of here. Justin, these are police, police yeah. detectives. I know. So, what's all this about then? We're making inquiries into a murder. Mm -hmm. That Ava Stockton thing, we saw it on the news, remember? Yeah, I remember. Mm. So, uh, why do you want to talk to us? Uh, we've got a lead via some phone mm. records. Mm. But I told them it's not my phone. Right. So? I think your wife has set us straight. Yes, it looks like a dead end that we don't need to waste our time on. Fine. So, if you're done, we're busy. What'd you say? There's a bed in the spare bedroom. The headboard looks very familiar. These are out, guys. Let's just drive around the corner and pull over. Sarge, we need a search warrant. Fast. The bed head, frosted glass and stainless steel. Yeah, fits. I'll let Wolfie know it'll help with the warrant. So, might this check their address against the rates? The Kaplan's own the place. So, started a background check and presto. Right build for the video too. Great. I'll see if he's got a record. Already done. You do know you're not a detective, don't you? Yes, but this guy was. Well, that's a police personnel file. He was in the job. His interrogation techniques involved over-enthusiastic use of the yellow pages. He was shown the door. No charges, no payout, quiet dismissal six years ago. Sounds like a real charmer. Did he get something out of the job though? His wife used to run an illegal brothel, got two charges of assault. Happy ever after, they're a team. How long? Well, put your foot down, they're spooked. They could take off at any minute. Go to hell. Well, just get here as fast as you can. Hello, Mr. Kaplan. What's it to you? We're obtaining a warrant to search your house. Obtaining? Got one yet? Not as yet. We'll just wait here until it gets here, shall I we? don't have to wait for anything, mate. I know how it works. Yes, you used to be in the job, didn't you? Chuck these in the boot, mate. Where you going, sir? Now, that's one thing I don't miss about the job, you know? Having to ask dumb-ass questions that people aren't required to answer. Get the cab, love. Ah, uh, you know, there's not much point. You got a flat tyre. What? For the love. Mr. Kaplan, we have a warrant to search your premises. Search away, be my guest. The warrant also applies to articles in your possession, sir. It's not in my possession, it's in a cab. And if I take them out, they aren't. Leave them alone. Hey, right, you're under arrest. She didn't touch it. You're under arrest. Assault police. Justin. Say nothing. Say bloody nothing. Come on. Your husband didn't seem too worried about us searching the house, so we're uh, focusing on your suitcases. We'll do the house too, especially that bedroom. You met Ava Stockton several months ago, right? At the gym, where you were known as Tracy Dobell. No. Gym staff picked out your photo. Part of the setup, was it? Because you're thorough, aren't you? And you're pissing in the wind, mate. So tell me, how does it work? I mean, if it's a male target, you set them up. But if the female target, your wife befriends them and eventually has a drink with them. Then you slip something into the drink. Is that what happened, Michaela? No. Yes, it is. We know you blackmailed Ava Stockton. Prove it. You can't. What's that supposed to do? Scare me? Is that your tough guy look? Clown. You got no connection between us and this Stockton woman? 
You want to have your wife saying exactly the same thing. But she's not as tough as you, is she? We've got the phone account. The gym. So what? You're going to have to do better than that, boys. We've got the tyre marks at the dump site. Now we're betting they'll match your car. Yeah, I wonder where that is. Found it yet? We will. And there'll be evidence in that too. You made friends with Ava, you spiked her drink, then you ran the camera while your husband had sex with her. No. It was blackmail. Blackmailers, they like to keep their material. Insurance. But then her husband found the DVD and kicked her out anyway. So she called your wife's phone, the one under the false name. Tell us what she said. What made you kill her? We didn't kill her. She was... She was what? She said she wanted to meet. I said no and hung up. We didn't kill her. So how come she ended up dead? Well, she found me. She waited at a place where she knew I shopped. And there was a sale. <laughs> she found me. What do you want? Drive the car. Now! Please, look, I can give you money. <laughs> money? I'm not interested in your money. I want my life back. That's what she said. I was amazed she had the guts to jump me. <laughs> we pick our targets so carefully. So if Ava was the one with the gun, how did she wind up dead? Is what I'm hearing correct? This is down to an ex-police officer and his wife? Got himself a new day job, ma'am. Targets. That's what Justin called them. He had to make sure they were suitable. Suitable? Yeah, they didn't need to be rich. Just have something to lose and a way to get to them. What about Ava Stockton? I hooked up with her at the gym. That was the perfect in for us. So why did you give them your real address under Tracy's name? They send out information on specials. So I took it slow. Chats and shopping. Then I invited her out for margaritas. It has to be margaritas because the drug tastes salty. The night she found you, what happened? She made me take her home. Drive the car, you bitch. Or I'll shoot you. Justin was watching telly. She was crazy. Go on. Move! Whatever you want, just take it easy. You're going to get the video camera and you're going to record yourself, right? You'll tell my husband what you did. Everything! No problem. Don't! I'll kill you. I mean it. Camera's in the bedroom. You can come with me if you want. You too. Go on. And it went off. We panicked. Oh, wonderful. We did not. They stripped the naked and they hacked off her head and her hands and they dumped the next to a railway line. It's not panic. It was cold, it's calculated. We had ourselves to consider our life. Uh, Miss Pritchard, um, I brought these for Mr. Stockton. It's his wife's rings and, uh, and the bracelet. Well, come in if you like. You can give them to him yourself. We're just going through arrangements for the funeral. No, thank you. Um, I've got a dinner to get to. What's going to happen to those people? They will be charged with extortion, rape and unlawful disposal of a body. Um, 
How long? How long have you been sleeping with him? Four years. I even never knew. We both loved her too much. He should have trusted her. Like she trusted him. And all you have is your dreams in there. Rising like a fire in the dark. When the whole world breathes together, and every second feels like coming home. Goodness. You see, you didn't need those extra uniforms. No. That was a good result, Stanley, and frankly, I didn't need it to go pear-shaped. Not right now. Something in the wind. I applied for a study fellowship, overseas sabbatical, some research I've been wanting to get my teeth into for a long time. It's a big opportunity. And as it turns out, I've got it. Oh, congratulations, Bernice. That's great. You'll be in a prime position for advancement when you get back. I can understand why you wouldn't want anything to take a shine off it. I'd never put my own agenda before a case. No, of course not. When do you leave? Soon, but please, Stanley, keep it confidential. Well, there's no sound. Yeah, there's no sound. Well, baby, there's still a song. <laughs> oh, the daylight coming on. Oh, the daylight coming on. And on. 